Hello and welcome to my video. Today I want to show you how to create this cute looking sun illustration inside the Silhouette Studio. And the inspiration comes from my sticker sheet from my Etsy shop which you can find on the web page uh, cuteandglute.etsy.com. And not only you can get those as a physical sticker sheets, but you can also get those as the digital download files in the form of the Silhouette Studio project. So you can download this, open it in your Silhouette Studio and you can print this and cut this on your own if that's what you want. But today we will be doing something different. We will be taking this as an inspiration and trying to recreate this sun entirely inside the Silhouette Studio. And the first things first, I'm using the Silhouette Studio free version, which is called the Basic Edition. You don't have to actually pay anything for this. You can download this from the Silhouette website. And as you will see in today's video, it will be more than capable of uh, creating, of allowing us to create something like this. Okay, so let's get started. So I will start in the blank document, but as you will see, I've already pasted the preview of the Kawaii weather sticker sheet. And I will zoom in a little bit just so I can see the sun nicely, like so. And I will probably use this space on the left side to try to replicate the sun. So I will start with the sun body, which as you can see is a simple circle. So I will open the ellipse tool, but instead of drawing an ellipse like you do normally, I will press the shift key on my keyboard to restrict the drawing for the circle. And what I can do is I can probably move this over the sun to make sure that it's somehow the similar size. I don't need the exact same size, but I will try to make it somehow similar in the size, like so. Then I will move it back to the left side like so and i guess i can start setting the colors so for the fill which is this drop down i will open the color picker which is this icon and i will pick the yellow one and for the outline i will use the same thing i will color pick this outline color because this is not a black as you can see it's somehow dark violet or so and i will increase the point size for the outline to maybe one point maybe 1.2 just so it's a little bit bolder i can also zoom in a little bit more like so Okay, so we have the body, but we need this shadow on the bottom of the of the body. So what I will do is I will duplicate the circle one more time by selecting it with the selection tool and dragging it over or to the side with the Alt key being pressed. Of course, I can also click this duplicate button on the toolbar or what I can do is I can select edit, copy and edit paste or control C and control V. I only need one of those. But I, what I will do next is I will copy this actually from the menu copy and I will either hit the control F or select paste in front. So now the new copy will be pasted on the very same position. I will select this copy and use the arrow keys on my keyboard, maybe to go with the shift to make the bigger increments to move it a little bit up like so. So as you can see, we have a nice shape which forms down below, but we need to somehow subtract those shapes. So I'll select both shapes and open this pane, which is called the modify pane modifying panel and I will select subtract. So I'll subtract those two shapes from each other. And as you can see, we have this nice looking shape, which looks exactly like the shadow in here. So for this one, I will set the outline to be no outline, which is this icon. And for the fill, I will select one well, of this shadow color. So I'll select the eyedropper tool and pick this shadow color. Now I can move this to the same or the right position. But there is one problem. As you can see, our shape actually goes over the over the stroke, over the outline of the background shape. And that's because if when you draw something, when you draw a circle and you start increasing the point size for the outline, not only it increases to the inner side, but also to the outer side. So if I set this to 20, you will see it goes inside and outside at the same time. Thankfully, there is a setting in here I've set it to 2000, which is probably way too much. So let's let's just decrease it to some small number and get rid of it by pressing the delete key on my keyboard. And for the background, I will open the outline settings, which is a line style panel. And there is this position settings, which sets if the outline should be above the shape or below the shape. So if I select below the shape, we no longer have the problem of the shadow over the outline, but now the outline is somehow thin. That's because the half of the outline is actually hidden below the below the shape itself. So we need to double the size. So it will be 2.4 to get the same outline. Okay, I'll probably align this a little bit better using the arrow keys on my keyboard. And I'm pretty happy, happy with the result with the body shape of the sun. So let's move to eyes and the mount and the cheeks. So Basically, all of those except for the mouth are circles as well. So I'll select the ellipse tool and draw a small circle like so using the shift key or pressing the shift key on my keyboard, making sure that it's somehow similar size. And I will probably zoom in 
just a little bit more so I can see only the eye and I'll try to draw two smaller shapes, two smaller circles like so. So one like so and the second one on the bottom right corner like so. If I hide this I can hopefully try to align the view in a way that I can see the eye so I can use the eyedropper tool to pick the right colors. If you don't have this image you can always open the fill panel and try to find similar color in here or use the advanced options to use a color picker I mean using the palette to set the right color. Just so it's faster I will just use the eyedropper tool to pick those colors. This is a pure white and this is somehow lighter magenta or so. I will select all three shapes and set the outline to no outline because we don't need outline for the eye and I will also select object group to group this into one group. I will most likely move it over the image like so and maybe it should be just a tiny little bit smaller so I'll just resize it a little bit smaller. I will draw one more circle which will be the cheek and of course use the eyedropper tool to set the right color and no outline so no outline and then I will duplicate both the eye and both the cheek to the right side by pressing the alt key on my keyboard and moving this to the right side so both for the both cheek and the eye I will simply duplicate those. Now for the mouth itself I will use a special version of the line tool which is called the flexi shapes which is this arc I will click in the middle of the mouth and set the radius and then I will just erase it and it will allow me to set the angle. Now if you don't do it right from the beginning you can always use this arrow to set the size and you can always use those small handles, those uh, red handles to set the starting and end angle. So start point and end point. I don't want to move the image, I want to keep this selected and the eyedropper tool will be helpful to set the right fill color, I mean outline color and the outline width should be most likely 1.2 which will be the same as for the actual shape the body shape. So I will I will keep this selected, press the shift key on my keyboard and also select the left and right eye and the left right and left cheek. I will select object group, zoom out a little bit and move those, move the face over our sun. So let's just select this face and move it over our sun. It could be on top like on the image or it could be on the bottom. This is definitely up to you how you like it more. It doesn't look too good in the center though. So I will just keep it the same, I will move it to the top like so and we can move to the actual light rays. I mean I, I know it's a little bit strong word for just lines but those should be light rays. So I will select the line tool, draw a line and I, I will draw it with the shift key being pressed so just it snaps to 45 degree angles and make it really small like so. The color should be still there because this is the last used swatch so I will click this one and of course the point size should be 1.2. So what I will do now is I want to somehow duplicate out the circle and there are several ways how to do it. I will show you one but in a minute you will see that I will probably use a different one. So what I will do is I will duplicate this so with the alt key I will move it below this, below this body, select both of those lines and in the transformation I will just make sure that they are aligned in the horizontal position. Then I will select object group and what I want to do is I want to duplicate those while they are rotating. So for this one I'll open the replicate panel and there is this uh, advanced replicate where I can select how much I want to rotate each, each copy. So let's say this is circle is 360 degrees and I want to use 15 angle dec dec uh, increment which means I will get 24 lines. But since we have two lines the angle will be only 180 so 180 divided by 15 is only 12. We only need 12 copies. And of course the first and last will be the same, so we actually really only need 11 copies for 15 degree increment. So let's try to hit the replicate button, what happens? And voila, we have a nice looking light race. But if we decide that we want to make any adjustments, it will be pretty hard to do because those are individual elements. So let's see if we can do it in a different and better way. So I'll get rid of all of those, like so. And instead of drawing, uh, I'm just selecting those and hitting the delete key on my keyboard. Instead of drawing two of those lines, I will just draw one line and one circle. So one line, same settings, so same outline color being the purple one in the width of 1.2 points. And I will draw a circle, like so. I will draw it around our shape, around our body shape. And what I will do 
is I will use a function called for distributing an object around the other object, so around the circle, which is this one. It's called object on path. So I will select our line and I'll select show me grab handle and move this grab handle, this small one, over the circle. So it will snap to the circle like so. And by default, it's set to create three copies over the circle. So three copies, but we know we want 24 copies around the circle like so. And the great thing about using this method is I can still select the edit points and for our for our line, I can select one of those points and just move it with the mouse. So select one of those lines if I can click on this. Like so, it, turn, it turns white. And now I can use the up arrow on my keyboard to just make it tiny bit smaller like in this preview image like so. And I kind of liked it this way. You can still see the circle, so I can try to click on the circle itself and set the outline to be no outline, just so it doesn't get in our way. And I'm pretty happy with the result. So what what's left right now is this white shape, white you know wavy shape, which is actually a cut line for the cutter. So let's try to use a very similar method for drawing or for putting objects on 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 the line or object to create this background shape. So I will start with the triangle. So I will draw a rectangle polygon and I will press the Alt key just so it, it snaps to, or maybe it was Shift key or it, no, it's Alt key to snaps to some some predefined degrees. And I will draw, I will use this slider to decrease the number of segments, number of lines to just three beyond the triangle. And right now I will again draw a new circle in the very similar size, maybe actually a little bit bigger than the sun. I will try to position position it like it's center with the sun and I will make this triangle much smaller like so. Like this. What I will also do is I will set the outline to no outline and fill to white color. Actually for now let's let's set this to black outline just so we can see it a little bit better. The next step is same as the last time I will select I will select the replicate panel. I will open this object on path settings and set the show grab handle and move this grab handle over the circle like so. Again, I will increase the number of steps to 24. And just so I can see a little bit better what I'm doing, I will right click and select send to back. Send to back, not to front, send to back. Okay, like so. And you can see everything is almost fine, except we want a little bit of rounded corners or, you know, rounded shape. It's, it's too spiky right now. So let me zoom in as much as I can over our original shape, which should be the one on the top. This one is the one we can actually modify. And I will again open this or set the edit points tool. And for the left point, let me try to find the right point. So this is one of those points. And there is the, no. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to see points in some views. Maybe if I zoom out a little bit, no, it's not helping that much. Actually, let me let me move this to the side first. Okay, I'm, I know what I'm doing wrong. The problem is since I've started with the flexi shape, it's still the flexi shape, so I can still set the different number of polygons. But what I actually want to do is I want to change the points, the individual points. So for this one, I need to convert this to path. So I will select object, convert to path. And now I should have those points ready for me, like so. But again, it also expanded everything. So let me start again from the beginning. Let me actually get rid of this one. And sorry for the confusion. But let me actually undo this, move it to the side. We can still use the circle and we can still use this shape, but we need to get rid of all the other shapes, which I can probably do with the select by fill color. If I select select by color, there should be a white fill, which I can delete. So let me delete this one. Let me not delete the face, of course. It also deleted the face. Not the face, but only those triangles. Let me draw a new triangle up here using the same method. So using this. Pentagon and making it just a triangle resizing it to be a little bit smaller and I will select object convert to path. So now, now it's just a triangle, just three points, which I can set to no outline. 
and white fill color. I will resize it a little bit smaller. Open the replicate panel, which is which is of course this one. Show grab handle and move it over the circle. So now it should be working perfectly fine. I will set the number of repeats to be 24. And what I can do now is I can finally change the points. So I guess we can move it to the right position like so and make it below the circle, below the sun. So send to back like so and maybe move it just so it's perfectly aligned. At least a little bit aligned. I will zoom in as much as I can and now I can edit the point. So if I open the edit points tool, I can see three points for which I can which I can move and the, in, the entire shape is moving as well. So what I will do is I will select this point and click this icon which will make it smooth and I will also do it for this one. So let's make this smooth as well and the last one as well. So everything is kind of smooth. I want to change the handles just so it draws like the S shape for first part and also the S shape S shape for the second part. Like so. So there is this kind of S shape for both parts. And then I will move those to be much closer to each other, like so. And it takes some time and I will try to make it fast, but as you can see you can by just adjusting those points you can you can set the entire shape to be a little bit different. But I'm very happy with this result. Let's let's say that this is fine for us. So I'll zoom out again. And now what I will do is I will select this background shape and move it to the side. So what I can do now is I, will, I can select release copies, which will create those individual copies for me. And I will select everything and just weld everything together. So use this button on top, weld selected shapes into one shape. And I should get this one little nice shape, which I will again move to the right position, send to back, and I can use this as a cut line. So here we go. That's how you create a nice looking cute illustration of the sun, of the kawaii inspired sun. I will zoom out and get rid of this image because I don't need it anymore. And I will quickly show you how you can print this and cut it on your own. So the first thing you need to know is what's your page size, what's your sticker size. And most likely if you are living in the US that will be leather, if you are in the Europe that will be A4 size. And those are quite similar. So first you will set the right page size. The next thing is you will set the registration marks. And in most cases those should be set to type 1 if you have a newer version of Cameo like Cameo 3 or 4. And what I usually like to do is I would like to set the inset to be a little bit smaller as well as the length because the areas which are cross hatched shouldn't be, there shouldn't be anything over those. Otherwise the registra registration marks may not be properly identified by the cutting machine. So this is perfectly fine. Let me just or let me just keep it on the same spot and jump to the scent pane. So inside the scent pane, what you like to do is you would like to, you would like to set which objects or which shapes should be actually cut. And as you can see, everything is set to cut by default. So I will select everything. And in the right side, I will select no cut. So nothing is being cut. And I want to only select the background white shape. So let me just create or select this background white shape and only this one will be cut. As for the settings, I would most likely go with the standard uh, you know, sticker paper, one of those sticker papers. I usually use around yeah, 2 for the depth and the 5th, 14 or 15 for the force. But it kind of depends on your sticker sheet, you would have to do some test cuts. But that's how you do it. In the next step you would select file print and print this on your printer. So file print and print this on your printer. Then put it on your on your mat and place it into your silhouette cameo cutter. And in here in the send pane you will select send. And it will first read the registration marks and then it will cut around this image, around this sun. Now the last thing to note is for the background color I'm using a simple trick where you set the grid in the way that the spacing is so tight that you don't see individual lines. You know, if I try to move it to the left, all the way to the left, even smaller than one millimeter, it will be so close to each other, it looks like a background color. The advantage of doing so is that this color will never be printed. So even when we can nicely see this white outline, 
in this design view it will be printed like this so it the, the background color will not be printed and that's it that's how you create a nice looking uh, sun illustration in the silhouette studio free version if you like what you see please consider us checking my etsy shop on cute and glued .etsy .com. and thank you for watching see you next time bye